The ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter (TGO) or ExoMars Orbiter is a collaborative project between the European Space Agency (ESA) and Roscosmos that sent an atmospheric research orbiter and the Schiaparelli demonstration lander to Mars in 2016 as part of the European-led ExoMars program. The Trace Gas Orbiter delivered the Schiaparelli lander on the 16th of October 2016, which crashed on the surface. The orbiter began aerobraking in March 2017 to lower its initial orbit of 200 by 90. 8000 kilometers 120 by 60890 miles Aerobraking concluded on the 20th of February 2018 when a final thruster firing resulted in an orbit of 200 by 1050 kilometers 120 by 650 miles Additional thruster firings every few days raised the orbiter to a circular science Orbit of 400 kilometers, 250 miles, which was achieved on the 9th of April 2018. A key goal is to gain a better understanding of methane, CH4, and other trace gases present in the Martian atmosphere that could be evidence for possible biological activity. The program will follow with the Surface Science Platform and the ExoMars rover in 2020, which will search for biomolecules and biosignatures. The TGO will operate as the communication link for the 2020 ExoMars rover and the Surface Science Platform and provide communication for other Mars surface probes with Earth. Topic: History Investigations with space and Earth-based observatories have demonstrated the presence of a small amount of methane on the atmosphere of Mars that seems to vary with location and time. This may indicate the presence of microbial life on Mars, or a geochemical process such as volcanism or hydrothermal activity. The challenge to discern the source of methane in the atmosphere of Mars prompted the independent planning by ESA and NASA of one orbiter each that would carry instruments in order to determine if its formation is of biological or geological origin, as well as its decomposition products such as formaldehyde and methanol. Origins ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter was born out of the nexus of ESA's Aurora program ExoMars flagship and NASA's 2013 and 2016 Mars Science Orbiter concepts. It became a flexible collaborative proposal within NASA and ESA to send a new orbiter carrier to Mars in 2016 as part of the European-led ExoMars mission. On the ExoMars side, ESA authorized about half a billion euros in 2005 for a rover and mini station. Eventually, this evolved into being delivered by an orbiter rather than a cruise stage. Topic: <laughs> Attempted collaboration with NASA. NASA's Mars Science Orbiter (MSO) was originally envisioned in 2008 as an all-NASA endeavor aiming for a late 2013 launch. NASA and ESA officials agreed to pool resources and technical expertise and collaborate to launch only one orbiter. The agreement, called the Mars Exploration Joint Initiative, was signed on July 2009 and proposed to use an Atlas rocket launcher instead of a Soyuz rocket, which significantly altered the technical and financial setting of the European ExoMars mission. Since the ExoMars rover was originally planned to be launched along with the TGO, a prospective agreement would require that the rover lose enough weight to fit aboard the Atlas launch vehicle with NASA's orbiter. Instead of reducing the rover's mass, it was nearly doubled when the mission was combined with other projects to a multi spacecraft program divided over two Atlas V launches. The ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter was merged into the project, carrying a meteorological lander planned for launch in 2016. The European orbiter would carry several instruments originally meant for NASA's MSO, so NASA scaled down the objectives and focused on atmospheric trace gases detection instruments for their incorporation in ESA's ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter. Under the FY2013 budget President Barack Obama released on 13 February 2012, NASA terminated its participation in ExoMars due to budgetary cuts in order to pay for the cost overruns of the James Webb Space Telescope. With NASA's funding for this project cancelled, most of ExoMars plans had to be restructured. Collaboration with Russia 
On 15 March 2012, the ESA's ruling council announced it would press ahead with its ExoMars program in partnership with the Russian space agency Roscosmos, which planned to contribute two heavy-lift proton launch vehicles and an additional entry, descent and landing system to the 2020 rover mission. Under the collaboration proposal with Roscosmos, the ExoMars mission is split into two parts, the orbiter-lander mission in March 2016 that includes the TGO and a 2.4 meters 7 feet 10 in diameter stationary lander built by ESA named Schiaparelli. This will be followed by the ExoMars rover mission in 2020, also to be launched with a Russian proton rocket. Topic: <laughs> Launch. The Trace Gas Orbiter and Descent Module Schiaparelli completed testing and were integrated to a proton rocket at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan in mid-January 2016. The launch occurred at 9:31 coordinated universal time on the 14th of March 2016. Four rocket burns occurred in the following 10 hours before the descent module and orbiter were released. A signal from the spacecraft was received at 21:29 coordinated universal time that day, confirming that the launch was successful and the spacecraft were functioning properly. Shortly after separation from the probes, a Brazilian ground telescope recorded small objects in the vicinity of the Briz M upper booster stage, suggesting that the Briz M stage exploded a few kilometers away without damaging the orbiter or lander. Briefing reporters in Moscow, the head of Roscosmos denied any anomaly and made all launch data available for inspection. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Status. The Schiaparelli lander separated from the TGO orbiter on the 16th of October 2016, 3 days before it arrived on Mars and entered the atmosphere at 21,000 kilometers per hour, 13,000 miles per hour, 5.8 kilometers per second. Schiaparelli transmitted about 600 megabytes of telemetry during its landing attempt before it impacted the surface at 540 kilometers per hour, 340 miles per hour. The TGO was injected into Mars orbit on the 19th of October 2016 and underwent 11 months of aerobraking, March 2017 to February 2018, reducing its orbital speed by 3600 kilometers per hour, 2200 miles per hour, and its orbit from an initial 98000 by 200 km kilometers 60890 by 120 miles down to 1050 by 200 kilometers 650 by 120 miles Additional thruster firings through mid-April circularized the spacecraft's orbit to 400 kilometers 250 miles and full science activities began on the 21st of April 2018 Topic Specifications Dimensions The central bus is 3.2 meters times 2 meters times 2 meters 10.5 feet times 6.6 feet times 6.6 feet Propulsion 424N 95 lbf by propellant main engine used for Mars orbit insertion and maneuvers Power 20 square meters 220 square feet solar arrays spanning 17.5 meters 57 feet tip to tip and capable of rotating in one axis will generate about 2000 w of power at mars batteries two modules of lithium ion batteries with approximately 5100 watt hours total capacity to provide power during eclipses over the prime mission communication 2.2 meters 7 feet 3 in X band high gain antenna with a two axis pointing mechanism and 65 WRF traveling wave tube amplifier to communicate with earth two electra UHF band transceivers with a single helical antenna to communicate with spacecraft at Mars thermal control spacecraft yaw axis control to ensure the three faces containing the science payload remain cold mass 3755 kilograms 8278 pounds wet mass of the orbiter 4332 kilograms 9550 pounds wet mass of the orbiter plus Schiaparelli lander payload 113 8 kilograms 251 pounds of science instruments topic science 
The TGO separated from the ExoMars Schiaparelli demonstration lander and would have provided it with telecommunication relay for eight Martian solar days souls after landing. Then the TGO gradually underwent aerobraking for seven months into a more circular orbit for science observations and will provide communications relay for the ExoMars rover to be launched in 2020, and will continue serving as a relay satellite for future landed missions. The Friend instrument will map hydrogen levels to a maximum depth of 1 meter beneath the Martian surface. Locations where hydrogen is found may indicate water ice deposits, which could be useful for future crewed missions. Particularly, the mission will characterize spatial, temporal variation, and localization of sources for a broad list of atmospheric trace gases. If methane CH4 is found in the presence of propane C3H8 or ethane C2H6, that will be a strong indication that biological processes are involved. However, if methane is found in the presence of gases such as sulfur dioxide SO2, that would be an indication that the methane is a byproduct of geological processes. Detection The nature of the methane source requires measurements of a suite of trace gases in order to characterize potential biochemical and geochemical processes at work. The orbiter has very high sensitivity to at least the following molecules and their isotopomers Water H2O, hydroperoxyl HO2, nitrogen dioxide NO2, nitrous oxide N2O, methane CH4, acetylene C2H2, ethylene C2H4, ethane C2H6, formaldehyde H2CO, hydrogen cyanide HCN, hydrogen sulfide H2S, carbonyl sulfide OCS, sulfur dioxide SO2, hydrogen chloride HCl, carbon monoxide CO and ozone O3. Detection sensitivities are at levels of 100 parts per trillion, improved to 10 parts per trillion or better by averaging spectra which could be taken at several spectra per second. Characterization Spatial and temporal variability, latitude-longitude coverage multiple times in a Mars year to determine regional sources and seasonal variations reported to be large, but still controversial with present understanding of Mars gas phase photochemistry. Correlation of concentration observations with environmental parameters of temperature, dust and ice aerosols potential sites for heterogeneous chemistry localization Mapping of multiple tracers e.g., aerosols, water vapor, CO, CH4 with different photochemical lifetimes and correlations helps constrain model simulations and points to source, sink regions to achieve the spatial resolution required to localize sources might require tracing molecules at parts per billion concentrations Topic. Payload Like the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, the Trace Gas Orbiter is a hybrid science and telecom orbiter. Its scientific payload mass is about 113.8 kg and consists of the nadir and occultation for Mars Discovery Nomad has two infrared and one ultraviolet spectrometer channels. Developed by Belgium. The Atmospheric Chemistry Suite has three infrared spectrometer channels. Developed by Russia, Nomad and AXE will provide the most extensive spectral coverage of Martian atmospheric processes so far. Twice per orbit, at local sunrise and sunset, they will be able to observe the Sun as it shines through the atmosphere. Detection of atmospheric trace species at the parts per billion (ppb) level will be possible. The Color and Stereo Surface Imaging System (CASIS) is a high-resolution, 4.5 meters per pixel (15 feet pixel) color stereo camera for building accurate digital elevation models of the Martian surface. It will also be an important tool for characterizing candidate landing site locations for future missions. Developed by Switzerland. The Fine Resolution Epithermal Neutron Detector friend is a neutron detector that can provide information on the presence of hydrogen, in the form of water or hydrated minerals, in the top 1 meter 3 feet 3 in of the Martian surface. Developed by Russia <laughs> Relay telecommunications Due to the challenges of entry, descent and landing, Mars landers are highly constrained in mass, volume and power. For landed missions, this places severe constraints on antenna size and transmission power, which in turn greatly reduce direct-to-Earth communication capability in comparison to orbital spacecraft. 
As an example, the capability downlinks on Spirit and Opportunity rovers have only 1 600th the capability of the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter downlink. Relay communication addresses this problem by allowing Mars surface spacecraft to communicate using higher data rates over short-range links to nearby Mars orbiters, while the orbiter takes on the task of communicating over the long-distance link back to Earth. This relay strategy offers a variety of key benefits to Mars landers, increased data return volume, reduced energy requirements, reduced communications system mass, increased communications opportunities, robust critical event communications and in situ navigation aid. NASA provided an Electra telecommunications relay and navigation instrument to assure communications between probes and rovers on the surface of Mars and controllers on Earth. The TGO will provide the ExoMars rover with a telecommunication relay, it will also serve as a relay satellite for future landed missions. Results The spacecraft took its first photos of the surface of Mars on 15 April 2018. Data on the first atmospheric occultation is being analyzed. See also Topic References Topic External Links ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter at ESA. Int ESA ExoMars on Flickr.